I'm speaking to Mr. Didier Tribuk, who is the UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Mr. Tribuk, welcome to St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you, Ian. First off, let's start about talking about the post that you have, UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. What exactly does that entail? A UN Resident Coordinator is the representative of the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres in countries. And I'm posted in Barbados, as you said, this is a multi-country office covering not only Barbados, but nine countries and territories in the Eastern Caribbean, including St. Kitts and Nevis. And my role basically is to lead the whole UN development system. And here it's established as the UN sub-regional team for the Eastern Caribbean. And it comprises the head of the various UN agencies such as UNDP, PAHO, uh, UNICEF, UN Women, FAO, uh, and many others. There are currently 18 UN agencies uh, active in the Eastern Caribbean, and specifically in St. Kitts and Nevis, 12 UN agencies, funds and programs providing cooperation uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals in St. Kitts and Nevis. Right, and I'm sure most persons, of course, will be familiar with UNESCO. They've done quite a bit of work with a number of government agencies here. Correct. So, tell us, how long have you held that post? I've been in that post for three years and nine months now. Okay. So, what brings you to St. Kitts and Nevis at this time? Well, it brings me back to St. Kitts and Nevis, I must say, because indeed, after the pandemic, during the pandemic, I didn't have an opportunity to visit. But I wanted to take stock on how our cooperation is going, especially given that we have started the new cooperation framework cycle for the years 2022-2026 in the whole Caribbean uh, as, uh, as United Nations. And this is an opportunity, obviously, with the new elected government to discuss priorities and uh, how we can support uh, the vision of this government to achieve a uh, sustainable island state, for example, in St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, today we had the launch of a Sustainable Development um, Goal Joint Program. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, this is um, a joint program uh, that is funded by the Joint SDG Fund that covers St. Kitts and Nevis, but also Grenada, Anguilla, and the British Virgin Islands. So it brings four UN agencies, namely UNICEF as a lead agency, UNESCO, uh, ILO, the International Labour Organization, and the WFP, which is the World Food Program. And the objective is to address two issues. First, in order to build resilience, strengthening the social protection systems. We have gone through the COVID pandemic. Now there is what we call the triple crisis, the rising cost of living in food or energy and the difficulties to access finance as well. So it's important to have strong social protection system uh, to provide support to the most vulnerable, can be youth, can be women uh, or other segments of, of the society. And on the other hand, empower youth. So there is a very strong focus on empowering youth and young women, but also young males, uh, to make sure that, one, they can better access the labor market, hence reskilling, providing training, vocational training, to make sure that basically young people are in tune with the needs of the, of the labor market in a country like St. Kitts and Nevis, but also providing support in terms of entrepreneurship and offering opportunities so that they can reach their potential as entrepreneurs uh, in the near future. And I would recognize today at the stakeholder launch that there were quite a number of different persons from different agencies across government. And you've been meeting with stakeholders, local stakeholders here as well. Tell us who you met with and how the conversations went. Yes. Uh, well, I met with the uh, Prime Minister, Dr. Drew, um, and that was a great opportunity to uh, to discuss again. It's not the first time, but to, to discuss how, again, the UN can uh, meet the expectations to, to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and this vision of achieving a sustainable island state in St. Kitts and Nevis. I also had an opportunity to meet with uh, Mr. Philip, who was also at the launch of the joint program today, as well as Minister Clark, for example, uh, recently to discuss climate change, preparation for COP27, amongst other things. And uh, yesterday, I also had an opportunity to meet with uh, Minister uh, Douglas to, as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, who is, of course, uh, one of the main counterparts of the UN system, especially coming back, both Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs from the UN General Assembly. And could you tell us a bit about some of the outcomes of those meetings? First, I must say that we have an existing country implementation plan uh, for St. Kitts and Nevis, which is the very tailored support of all the UN agencies uh, to St. Kitts and Nevis. This was uh, signed a few months ago, covering the year 2022-2023, uh, in the areas, for example, of COVID 
post-pandemic recovery, especially socio-economic uh, recovery in the areas of digital transformation and digital economy, or uh, as well as uh, climate change adaptation, disaster risk reductions, and, and data, how to uh, strengthen data system. Um, but obviously, we want also to uh, enhance this plan to respond to the current priorities uh, of this government. And one of the outcomes of the discussion was to see how we can help uh, build further build resilience in the country, um, support the efforts to uh, develop renewable energy, for example, of course, working for youth, uh, support the government in expanding access to health care and especially uh, access to universal health care uh, in, in St. Kitts and Nevis, amongst many other areas. Now, I just want to touch back briefly on the joint program launch that we mentioned earlier. You spoke a bit about having youth access to the labor market a bit more. You also spoke about empowering you know, women in particular. That's an important part. And it, it's aligned with the government's new vision. That is something that the Prime Minister would have shared when he addressed the 77th UN General Assembly. But what can you tell us about the three main outcomes of this joint SDG program? This joint program, first, the main outcome would be to strengthen social protection system uh, in the country so that it can better target the most vulnerable, and as you mentioned, women, uh, youth in particular. Uh, I would say second or perhaps overarching outcome is to reduce poverty, mm -hmm. to also reduce inequalities. And then third outcome is to empower youth, provide a voice, uh, an opportunity for, for youth to voice their needs uh, so that they participate even more in decision-making process. And doing this uh, through uh, training, vocational training, uh, access to you know, capital financing, incubation uh, models for them to create their own enterprises if they wish so, uh, is certainly a good avenue to uh, make sure that the young people of St. Kitts and Nevis can reach the best potential they have. And the support isn't just extended through government programs, but private sector, non-governmental... Yes, the idea, of course, is to associate all actors of society, and that's the way the UN system works. Uh, we are, uh, our primary, of course, national counterpart is the government, or several government entities, uh, but we work with civil society, we work as well with private sector. Private sector is a very important actor for reaching development targets, and we know this, so that's why we also promote public-private uh, partnerships in order to achieve those ambitious goals uh, which in the end relate to sustainability and building a better future. It's important to rely on all sorts of financing and not solely uh, domestic public resources. Now the joint program is being piloted in four countries. Um, St. Kitts and Nevis, as you would have mentioned, of course, is one of them. How long will this program run for? It will run for uh, a bit more than two years. Um, and of course that's the first investment, three million uh, US dollars. Uh, to get started between the UN system and yes resources coming from the UN system uh, but what we do expect is that not only in terms of resources we catalyze additional resource mobilization from other sources for example including private sector but then this also gives birth to other initiatives in order to scale up the type of, uh, of support that is needed to the country and, and the region. And that's why the OECS Commission is also associated to this initiative in order to replicate uh, this model in, in, the, in the whole sub-region of the Eastern Caribbean. Right. Now, in addition to this program that is being implemented, is there anything in the very near future that uh, is coming from the UN, other programs to be implemented in St. Kitts and Nevis in the very near future? Well, we do expect to support all efforts to uh, increase access to quality health care and universal access to health, for example. We also do expect that as a result of the impact of what I mentioned as the triple crisis, uh, we can work with St. Kitanovitz, but the region in general, uh, to strengthen food system in order to increase production of local food and better access to the food that is available not only in St. Kitts and Nevis, if more is produced in the future, but in the Caribbean um, as a whole, um, as well as uh, developing renewable energy sources. I think there is, uh, we believe, like governments in the region, that it's important to manage the, the green transition and the transition to renewable energy sources, as well as greater energy efficiency. So we, we really look forward as UN development system, but also with multilateral banks like the Caribbean Development Banks, with whom uh, I've just signed an agreement with the president of the CDB three weeks ago, uh, to really help 
the region uh, to boost their capacity in uh, managing this transition to green and blue economy. All right. uh, is there any final comments that you would like to leave? Well, it's always a pleasure for me to uh, to be in St. Kitts Nevis, finally, after uh, a bit more than two years. I'll be going to Nevis tomorrow. Uh, I'll have an opportunity also to visit uh, several projects. So uh, I think this is a country that, a that has a great potential. And we do expect this year uh, uh, an important economic rebound. So the future is looking very promising. Thank you. It's certainly a pleasure speaking to you. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you.